I know what you guys are wondering. Where is she at? And the thing is, guys, is that she's on PTO right now. So we're trying to get her figure out. And if you guys are new here, don't know what I'm talking about. I have a whiteboard that is way bigger than this and is not as small as this one right here. So we had to bust out the little guy today. It'll get the job done though. Regardless, yo, what is going on everyone? And welcome back to another YouTube video. For any of you guys that are new here, my name is Levi. Now today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to run further, okay? And I'm talking about this because I think that a lot of the times when people have asked me about how to get into running, I think that they're asking, how do I run further? Like, how do I actually get into running? Because to ask how to get into running in general is pretty easy to answer. Put on a pair of shoes, go outside, and just start jogging, right? And I don't think that's what a lot of people mean. And I think that they mean like, how do I actually become a runner? How do I actually run further? So I'm gonna break that down to day for you guys. So before we get started, I do wanna let you guys know I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for this video. We're gonna be doing it for the month of August. We're gonna be giving away a Transparent Labs product, which is going to be a package of protein bars, a 12 count. We're also going to be doing a Transparent Labs gym bag. So. All you have to do for that is like this video, comment below, and then I pick up a winner. That's as simple as that. You guys know the drill. All right, so with that all being said, let's get into today's video. So the first thing that you wanna do when you're becoming a runner, and I'm gonna actually just hold this, I'm literally gonna only use the stand to write today, is you're gonna want to run in zone two more often. For those who don't know what zone two is, zone two is one of the zones, I believe it's zones one through six, and zone two is a pace in which you run where you can carry a conversation when your heart rate is still relatively low. So imagine if you had to go for a five mile run and you were able to effectively communicate next to me. That pace is the pace that you would run at for zone two. So for a lot of people, that average is probably gonna be somewhere in between, in bet in between, in between 10 to maybe 12 minutes, but more so 10 to 11 minutes, because at 12 minutes, you're kind of like speed walking, which can be zone two for some people, but for most, I would say somewhere in between that 10 to 11 minute range if you're fairly in shape. And so why is, why is it that you wanna run in zone two more often? So if I can remember correctly, the mitochondria density increases when you run in this zone more often, which helps to burn energy in your body more efficiently. When your body is able to use energy more efficiently, it's going to help you on a longer distant run. It's just gonna help your body do the thing that you're trying to do better already. And to run, you need to use energy. So if your body can do that easier, it's going to make running easier, which will allow you to run further and how much zone two should you be doing. So there's a rule called the 80-20 rule. So that means 80% of your running is done in zone two and the other 20% is in higher zones or some sort of speed work. I miss the old board cause like now I have to go through and like erase every single one. And the next thing you're gonna wanna do is slowly, and that means increase. Granted again, smaller board, so we're working with what we got. So you're gonna slowly increase the amount that you're running per week and a good range to increase it at is around 10 to 15%. The reason that this is so important to being able to run further is because I made the mistake one time of thinking, oh, I'm Mr. Big Man, I can go run 10 miles. And I went and ran 10 miles and it did not go well. I couldn't recover within like a short enough time period for me to even continue building my endurance, if that makes sense. Slowly increase, you know, so if you're new to running, maybe you start out with like one mile runs, maybe two mile runs, and then every week increase each run by 10%. This will just allow you to build that base and you'll be running big, long distances before you know it. Something I did horribly wrong when I first got into running when I was about like 18, 19 years old is every single run that I ran at was at a tempo speed. So. It was really fast, like race pace speed. So I was running like six minutes and 50 sec 15 seconds like per mile for every single mile. And it wasn't making me a better runner. It was actually just keeping me 
where I was at because I wasn't including any other sort of run workouts. It's kind of like weightlifting too. So let's just say for example, I want to increase my bench, right? Well, obviously having like a good chest and doing chest workouts will help, but there's secondary muscles that are included in that. So that's gonna be triceps, it's gonna be shoulder work, right? That's gonna attribute to a bigger bench and the same thing with this, like if you wanna be able to run further, doing these other workouts are gonna work on different things within the body to help you run further are going to be able to help with that. So you can't just do a tempo run all the time. Like I just said, you have to be willing to do things like easy runs, kind of like we talked about earlier. So that's just like zone two runs, right? And you also have to do things like interval runs that will get your body used to your heart rate going down and then going back up rather pretty quickly and just other variations of workouts. This will just be more effective making you a better runner overall. If you were to ask me about a year ago about this, I probably would have said nothing about it because I just didn't think of it as something that I needed to do. But something that will help you so much in being able to run further is stability. Now, you might be like, what do you mean by stability? I mean like working out muscles that help stabilize your body. Now this is also good for powerlifting, this is good for bodybuilding, it's good for everything besides just running. But the reason it's so important for running is because for me, as some of you guys know on the channel, if you guys have been watching it, I have been struggling with an injury and this injury was due to the fact that my muscles that help stabilize my body were very weak. And so it led to an overload on my hip in the joint area and so I've had to work on it through PT and some other sort of work, seeing doctors, not fun stuff, right? And so essentially what stability workouts help to do is they help to keep your form during the run. So sure, you might be good for like the first five miles out of the seven miles of your run, but if those last two miles, all of a sudden like your pacing changes, your form starts to break down, it might not like affect you right away at the end of the run, but if those accumulate over time, it leads to what ended up happening to me and that's an injury. Also, it just makes the run less effective, like especially if you know you're trying to go for a tempo run, a fast run, and all of a sudden you can't do it because your form's starting to break down, your body's starting to feel weak, like you, you want your stability for that purpose. For this last one, a lot of you guys might be saying to yourself like, no, duh, you know, like I know I need to have my nutrition in order, and it's not necessarily like having your nutrition in order, it's making sure that your nutrition is properly in place. So I think what a lot of people get wrong is that they think, oh, I just, I need to eat healthy, right? If I'm gonna be running, getting in shape, and it's like, yes, that's true to an extent, but you also need to be properly fueling yourself. So running is going to involve a lot more simple carbs. So that would be things like rice, pasta, some sourdough bread, and it's also gonna involve things like salt. I put salt on here. And the reason for that is because your body wants to use glucose when you run, because your body wants to be able to quickly pull that from the body to use it as a source of energy, right? Especially on tempo runs, interval runs, things that are gonna you know, increase your heart rate. As for zone two, that's a totally different subject. We kind of talked about that earlier and efficiency in running. It kind of cross threads over with this, but you wanna make sure that you are properly giving yourself enough simple carbohydrates and also not just eating way too many fats right before a run as well. So those are the two things. Get enough carbohydrates, do not eat too much fats before a run, and there's gonna be a third thing, make sure you're getting your salt. And the reason that salt is super important is because when you are running, you are losing a lot of sodium, and sodium is gonna help prevent cramps, and a lot more other things gonna help with blood flow and stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that your nutrition is properly dialed to tailor toward you being able to run further. Make sure you guys are properly fueling yourselves before you run and also don't run on an empty stomach. I know some people work out on an empty stomach. I always suggest doing what's you know best for you, but I do not believe in my personal opinion that anyone should be going on a run with on you know on an empty stomach because I don't know what your body is pulling from for glucose and stuff like that, you know, unless you're in like a state of ketosis, but that's very that's a very long process to even get into. So that's my take on that. That is how you will be able to increase the amount of distance that you can cover when you run. I hope that this helped you guys a lot because it helped me a lot and I can run further. Really quick, I am going to put a Google Doc down below of my stability workout. So if you guys wanna download it and use it, 
I strongly recommend it. You know, it'll just help you that much more, especially if you're trying to become, you know, not again, not only a better runner, but better lifter too. Like it'll help in every realm because stability is, I think very foundational to being strong, you know? So definitely utilize that to your ability. Also, just a little update from the other vlog videos. I have all of a sudden become somewhat indecisive. I'm not too sure if I want to do the trifecta for a Spartan race all in one weekend or do a high rocks. I'm still kind of in the midst. And I know I didn't tell you guys that in one of the previous videos, but that's just kind of where I'm at right now. I'm like, ah, well, do I do that or do I do that? Cause some of you guys may know my friend passed away in 2022 and I was on like a mission to do it. And I went to Arizona and then my friend passed and I had to come back for the funeral. It was crazy, but yeah, I don't know. Either way, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys liked today's video. If you guys did, sure give it a like. And if you guys are new here, you already know what to do. And as always, that trying to do what you love. The sky's the limit. We'll see you all in the next one.